made it to the end of the row. Yay! Oh my goodness, is there anything better than a stockinette, vanilla sock, and self-striping yarn? Oh, look at that. Oh, you gotta see the new color. <laughs> Hello makers and welcome back to another studio vlog. If you are new, welcome. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where each week I share what I am making, whether it be knitting, sewing, stitching, or crochet, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I may be down, as well as a look behind the scenes of my creative business where I make project bags for makers like you. How are you doing? I hope that you've had a wonderful week. I have had another very full week uh, and it is now Saturday. It is about three, it's 3.57. I just returned home. I'm still a little rosy in the cheeks from a full day, a full morning of doing housework and kind of getting some things organized or rather separated out, which I will explain here, and then a full day of doing errands um, that I needed to do for personal errands, just kind of normal stuff, as well as uh, some errands for the shop as well. But I am back and I'm sitting down and chilling out with you all. I've got some water behind me. No coffee, because obviously it's four o'clock. And this week I have some knitting to share with you, as you will see, a little bit of crochet, uh, some shop news, and then I thought I would show you some like snippets from my day to day uh, and kind of show you the haul that I have <laughs> from the various shops that I went to, uh, just in case you'd be interested. But yeah, without further ado, let's get started into some, some, <laughs> some nitty goodness. If you have been watching for the last month and a half, two months or so, I have for the most part been working on a tank top uh, project, the Keen Wonder tank top. Uh, and I just received a couple of weeks ago a skein of yarn that I needed to finish the project and I have not touched it at all. And the reasons why is because of work. There's a lot happening at work, a lot of transitions happening. Um, and I'm at a place in that project where I need to really focus on the pattern and do, I think I'm to the point on the racer back where I need to do uh, increases to finish up the back and then do seaming and pick up stitches and all of that. And to be honest, my brain has just not, I haven't had any time until probably about 5.30 or 6 to even think about yarn <laughs> as of late. But uh, by that time, my brain is mush. And so it's like the last thing that I want to do, which is why yesterday I finally went, I was watching TV. I felt antsy because, you know, we need, we knitters, we makers, we need something in our hands while we're doing something a lot of the time. And I thought, okay, that's it. I've got to, I know I need to finish this tank top, but I've got to have some knitting in my hands. And the crochet has been wonderful. I have a granny stripe blanket on the go that I'll show you here in a second. Um, but I needed some stockinette knitting because I can, for the crochet, I need to look at it. And I just was wanting to like stare at a TV and like I'm watching a lot of Korean dramas right now, so I needed to read the sup subtitles. I always say super titles because I work in opera and super titles. But, um, and I just needed something that I just, I have done so many times and I just didn't need to think about it. And then also you just have the joy of self-striping yarn and the colors changing. So I perused behind me in my lovely stash and I picked out this gorgeous skein of yarn that I've been cherishing and treasuring that I had finally gotten a couple of years ago, I think it was a couple of years ago, uh, by Coloring Book Yarns. And if you know her colorways, they are gorgeous. Her yarn is very hard to come by. She only does it in little batches and then posts about it on Instagram. I believe that's how it's still done. Um, and I just snapped it up, whatever the colorway was, <laughs> I happened to see it that day and I picked it up. So this is the colorway Hey Girl. It's a fingering weight, 
uh, 400 yards, 100 grams, 80, uh, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Uh, leave everything that I chat about today will be in the show notes down below. And this, I mean, here's the skein of yarn. You will have seen it already, but I mean, I can't, I, it's just amazing. The color combo, the blue, I'm just so into blue. That's the same color as my tank top. And I love an orange and this sky blue and the pink. I mean, they're colors that I never necessarily, and a gray, I never would have necessarily put together, but they're amazing. And then here's the sock. It's beautiful. I'm doing toe up. I'm just going to my standard go-to without even thinking way of knitting socks, which is toe up. I do um, make one right and left knit, make one right and left knit around, you know, whatever, and increase until I have 64 stitches uh, total um, and then halved because I'm doing magic loop. I'm using 2.25 millimeter needles. Uh, I love my chow goos. I'm remembering all the stats to share with you all. It's been a while. Uh, and I'm just loving it. This little stitch marker is one that I, oh, my hide my face. This is uh, one that I had in my shop. I don't believe I have any right now, but um, this was one I had during the winter time, during Christmas Yule uh, holiday season. It just was in my little tray over here, so I nabbed it to mark the right side or the start of the round. Oh, and it's just pure joy. And just getting to the next color just makes me so happy. It's just reminding me, as well as the Granny Stripe pro uh, project that I'll grab here to show you, just not only the making of a garment, which I'm so focused and excited to do throughout the year, um, is exciting to create something that you will be wearing and that you will be using but that i really need to also value and make time to set aside just for pure knitting and enjoying the color of the yarn and and um the act of just the rhythm of it and not that i forgot about that but i think i just have been so focused as of late so far this year on monogamous knitting and kind of product knitting um, that I forgot about just the joy of just having a project on the go. Do I need another pair of socks? No, I do not. Am I going to make these a pair of socks for my mom as I usually do? No, I'm not. Sorry, mom, because this colorway is too precious to me. So it will be one of the handful of pairs that I have kept for myself, but it's just it's just a wonderful reminder. And let me know down below in the comments if you, I, I believe all of y'all probably feel the same, but if every once in a while you realize you kind of forgot that and you're reminded of it, but I am excited that it, hopefully I could remind you of that too, because I need reminding sometimes. But my granny stripe blanket, this is a crochet project that I started for the same reasons. I just needed something easy and on the go. And I'm making this out of my scraps. And I'm almost done with another uh, stripe, if you will. Um, I Lord knows once I get really into this blanket, I'm not gonna be able to tell you every single colorway, but um, I will leave all the details down below. I'm gonna try to keep track on um, my Ravelry page, so check that out. But the one I'm doing right now is a colorway by Elm Tree Yarns. Um, and I think is she said that she's gonna dye up some more um, pretty soon, but this is a Jemima Puddle Duck colorway. I made a pair of socks. A lot of these were pairs of socks and you always have so much leftover yarn. And as you can see, I'm gonna still have a lot of leftover yarn, but I'm aiming for just doing, um, I would say three, I'm doing like three, I don't know what you call these. I call them trebles. I think they're du double crochet in America, but I tend to use the British terms for some reason, maybe because of the tutorials, even though the tutorials tell me either way, but it makes more sense logic logically that these are called trebles because it's like a trio. There's three of the stitches in here. Anyway, so I am gonna 
aim to do uh, three. Um, this guy here has like three on part of it because I did like a magic knot ball to um, join this game. But I think going forward, I'm really definitely going to aim for three. I think I like the look of that. Um, and then try to do the magic knot just because it's easy and I trust it because of other blankets that I've made in the past using that. Um, and I, I do not want to weave <laughs> on this. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to start it at the beginning of the row, if you will. So it'll be, it'll be pretty clean going forward. I was gonna, I still might like use a variety of different types of colors. Um, not necessarily, but so far I'm really digging, like these are all in the same kind of, they work together. So I don't really want to all of a sudden put a brown in here necessarily, but we'll see. Talk to me. We'll see where I'm at in like two years with <laughs> this guy. And also before I forget, I'm using a, and this is what I have to get used to. I can just like take this off. Um, this is a 3.25 millimeter hook. Um, it is a D in US. I was hiding the thing and this is a set of uh, from a set of clover hooks so yeah so it's really fun besides knitting and crochet this week or really yesterday and today on Saturday I have been sewing and sewing for the shop I am getting ready first of all thank you all so much for your orders and for taking part in the Christmas flash sale if you will or the Christmas in July sale that I had uh, last week or the week before uh, and that was so much fun and hopefully you all are enjoying your bags and are in the festive mood as you work on your projects for gifts this year or just because you like making holiday related stuff um, but that was so much fun there's still some holiday bags in the shop and they'll stay there until somebody wants to bring them home uh, and now I'm starting to make new bags again uh, new collections it has been a while because I've been taking a break uh, I took about a month and a half two month break in terms of making new items um, for the shop and I am excited to say that I have two collections that are coming on August 16th and so I've been starting to work on the return of late summer firefly bags that collection is returning it feels like it should be an annual thing now every August and so those will be coming in all of the various bag varieties that I have um, everything you can see at stitchingthehighnotes.com and then a new collection which I'm so excited to bring to you all that I've been I've been hoping to have this fabric in my hot little hands for a couple of months now because I pick my fabric primarily over on Spoonflower and I try to choose it pretty far in advance, a couple of months in advance, because when I always uh, try to coordinate with the um, designer of the fabric uh, to get permission, if it's not super clear on their, on their design page that they're okay with it for commercial use. Um, and it's also really fun because I start to kind of chat and, and Kind of build a little bit of a relationship with some of these amazing designers so this is going to be i'm going to call it uh summer magic and it's a really fun vibrant kind of summer of love kind of vibe fabric which i feel is really appropriate for the san francisco bay area out here uh, it has some moths and butterflies some little moon themes in there as well mushrooms just really, really beautiful, vibrant colors. And I just can't wait to share with you all. I'll be showing previews of those bags uh, next Sunday in that week's vlog um, before the update on Monday, uh, the 16th. And the time, I'll just decide right now. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say 10 a.m. I'm gonna start giving myself a little bit more time. <laughs> Because work for me starts at 9 a.m. This is all Pacific time. Um, and so that'll give me enough time, a little buffer time, if you will. So yeah. So uh, August 16th at 10 a.m. Pacific. All of the info will be over on the website. And I'll send out 
a newsletter as well as on Instagram, you know, the drill, all that stuff. So it's been fun to sew. It was so, it's been amazing using my new machine. Um, I got a new shop, uh, sewing machine, a, uh, Juki, um, Oh Lord, I can't remember. TL 2010Q, took me a minute to remember that, uh, or a minute, a second. Uh, and I, it's just amazing. It's a workhorse. It has just been a blessing to have that um, for the shop, especially as I'm gearing up to make holiday box bags and um, I'm making uh, bags for a Practical Magic Halloween Advent box that I collaborated on with Nancy of Trilogy Yarns. Those will be going out very soon. Um, those are in process uh, and so I'll be sending those off. I can't show you because it's a, it's a surprise, but that's been really fun. And then, oh yeah, I was gonna uh, share with you, I am collaborating on a book box with my friend Gabby of Plies and Hellhounds. Um, we are doing this book box and I'm doing a new thing for the first time and I've, I've, I gotta get cracking on it. I kinda waited a little bit too long <laughs> to get, get with it, although granted, a lot's been happening work you know uh but i am making a book sleeve for the first time for these boxes and if all goes well if i if well it will go well because they're going to be in these boxes and i'm so excited um but i think i'm gonna i might finesse it i might finesse the pattern a little bit more i don't know we'll see but i think i'm going to be bringing book sleeves to the shop sometime in the fall. So if you're interested in that, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear, um, you know, if you're hyped up about it. Um, I know I am because I've been reading like crazy this past year. So um, I'm really excited to kind of bring something new to the shop. And now let's just sit and chat about today and the errands that I ran. So I uh, had to go to El Cerrito and to Albany, Berkeley area in the East Bay, a little bit further south, about 20 minutes south of me. Uh, and I had to run a variety of <laughs> errands. One is that I needed to do a very first round, I'm reminding myself this will be the first round of many to come of purging stuff. So recycling and donating um, a variety of items because I'm trying to get even more minimal than I already am. Um, and it just felt time. There's something about this transitions that are happening right now in career and life uh, this past year and a half that I'm ready to say goodbye to a lot of things that suddenly feel like they don't really belong or represent me. Like I'm actually, I'm probably pretty soon gonna get, I'm gonna donate um, some of my furniture and get some new furniture that feels more like who I am now, <laughs> a 40-year-old Joanna instead of 29-year-old Joanna, and uh, just as more representative of my time of life. I also need a couch that, um, you know, my sister and family and friends can sleep on, because uh, the one I'm on right now, I love it, but it's a little love seat, and you can't even, like, stretch out to watch TV on it. And it's just time and it, I, I think these are still in really good condition that they can go to another home and and continue to live on. Um, but there was yarn that I think I organized maybe two years ago <laughs> and it put in different bins to either donate as art supplies or I'm either going to sell it or donate it to um, a local yarn store and have that be like a dedicated really high quality art supply stash um, but I needed to get like the first round of it going and I cleared out I decided I don't watch DVDs anymore I don't have any like collector DVDs that I want to keep there's some personal DVDs like some of my performances in my opera singer days um, on DVD that I of course kept but I decided to donate uh, my DVDs and my DVD player and just started to kind of do all of that. So I took about a car, I almost a car load full of stuff 
to and dishes as well and to this amazing um recycling and donation center community donation center uh, community swap really because there's um uh a goodwill truck there but there's also like a community swap center as well and so I went there first today uh, and it was amazing I hadn't been there in a really long time I don't think since maybe once since I moved into this place uh, and what, before I moved into this place I had donated and recycled quite a bit of things because uh, it was another one of those times where I guess it's been about four years maybe three or three and a half almost four years um, and it was another like big trans like phase of life new chapter of life that I felt like I needed to kind of do um, and I was going minimalist um, so it felt so freeing and wonderful and I can't wait to keep plugging away and kind of really taking a look at stuff um, and I've been pretty good about not bringing more stuff in like filling the void of, of what I've donated back then or now um, so that feel, feels really good trying to make sure that I'm not being wasteful you know just to kind of churning stuff all the time but everything that I sent there today will hopefully go to a new home um I know I know the reality is that sometimes Goodwill does end up kind of sending stuff to the landfill but uh, for the most part I think everything was in good enough quality and let me tell you in that community swap people like dove right into the books that I put in the bin and the DVDs and people were like because people go trying to sell stuff and I was like all right y'all it was like vultures <laughs> descending on it so that made that made me feel really good so I got that done and then I went to the mothership. I went to Joanne Fabrics to get a bunch of stuff for the shop. I got some interfacing. They were having amazing coupons, more than usual amazing coupons today. So it was hopping at Joanne Fabrics. Um, I got some interfacing for my bags. Um, I got some new types of interfacing to try out for the book sleeves as well as for the pockets in my maker's briefcases. I'm going to start, uh, I think, putting interfacing in those to make them a little bit sturdier. And um, and I got some, the other interfacing I got was foam interfacing. And that's for the book sleeves. But I, I don't know if I got enough. I'm going to have to go back and get more anyway if it works out. But I think I'm going to start using that in the maker's briefcases as well so that uh, folks can use that also for laptops or books or what have you because I do get questions um, every once in a while of if it is padded enough to use for a laptop or something like that so um, yeah so I'm excited for that and then I got for myself <laughs> uh, for my home I got some baskets to put to organize my chips and crackers and all of my tea because it's just been kind of like in a just kind of you know somewhat tidy but it's just been like in the pantry um and I just cleared out a bunch of my mugs um that I don't really need anymore or want anymore um and just really pared them down and so there was some space for some baskets so I got some of those those were like 40 percent off um, which was wonderful and then I had even more coupons on top of that I think I saved about because I got quite a bit for the shop um, some stuff that I needed for several um, updates and shop updates I think I saved about a hundred dollars which is amazing love it so that was a success uh, then I went to Bay Quilts to see what um, fabrics they had, if the, anything caught my eye and they had enough yardage that maybe I could use it for a future um, update. And I didn't really see anything there. I'm still more like Spoonflower really has my vibe and I love that there's such a wide variety on Spoonflower. I wanted to go to another local shop too. Um, the Stone Mountain and Daughter Fabrics, but they're still closed for uh, public, so they're only doing curbside or online shopping, which is fine by me. Y'all do your thing. Um, stay safe. So um, otherwise, I probably would have gone there to see. Um, 
so yeah, so no new fabrics there, but they hardly ever have the amount of yardage. I usually have to get 15 to 20 yards for a shop update. So uh, that would be like a whole bolt <laughs> that I'd be like cleaning out. And uh, yeah, so that's why I, a lot of the times I uh, order from Spoonflower anyway. Uh, after that, I went to one, a place that I'm trying to go every weekend or just check in to see if I need to go uh, every Saturday and that is my local bulk shop uh, where I get household goods, makeup, um, uh, yeah, and stuff like that, laundry detergent and hand soap and that is a place called Phil Good. Uh, that is in, they're on the line of Albany and Berkeley they moved to this awesome street called Solano Avenue that's like this long street um, that is in Albany and Berkeley uh, and it just I used to live in that area and so it's just like it has all of these wonderful shops and this shop I'm so happy that they they have a wonderful system down of everybody has to check in uh, Bay Quilts was like that too you had to check in make sure they only had so many people in the store um, you know you do your hand purifier and everything and for filling up items that you need to get in bulk um, the store uh, people do it for you, which is great, and they wipe down your, um, you know, I brought a mason jar and a hand soap dispenser, um, and they do it for you, tell them what you want. Um, I got some lavender hand soap. I'm like, I love the lavender, and it's helping with stress right now, so <laughs> I got some lavender hand soap, and for the first time, I got some laundry detergent. I got some liquid laundry detergent. Um, I can't remember the brand. I took a video of the menu and everything, and I need to look online as well. I'll probably take a picture next time, too, of what they offer. Um, but yeah, so I, I got that, and then I couldn't resist. I got a few other things. Actually, let me go get it so I can kind of do like a little feel-good uh, green haul, if you will. <laughs> A little bit of context before I jump into this. If you're new here, I've been slowly but surely going more and more low waste. Um, so as I run out of items, I am, now that it's the shops are open again and it's safe to do so, I'm not gonna <laughs> stay that way. Um, I have been purchasing um, bulk equivalents or more eco-friendly equivalent so i ran out of laundry detergent actually this morning uh, so i decided to grab a mason jar and get some laundry detergent and i have a label maker that i'm just going to plop a label on here so i know and i can also put it on the lid too so i've got this it says the lady wrote on here two tablespoons so i've got to figure out uh a little tablespoon thing that I want to use with my laundry detergent and then I got some hand soap um, I haven't used this guy in a while um, because I've just been getting um, some Meyer uh, hand soap which is uh, fairly eco-friendly but they do use plastic uh, bottles for their stuff it is recycled I think plastic but still um, but I love this little hand soap dispenser and so I was really excited to get some bulk so I got some lavender for that and then I got so I got this duster a while ago and there's this brand called Marley's Munsters and I use their um, I have for the most part unless I'm taking off nail polish I don't use cotton uh, pads anymore for taking off my makeup I got these reusable cotton little like squares that they've just like surged around and I think it's like a hundred percent organic um, fabric um, so I use those and then clean them in this like little mesh bag uh, like a lingerie bag and then I also have like some um, washcloths that I actually need to get some more of to take off the rest of my makeup as well uh, and then I have this too. So this is this cool, like you get this little doodaddy. It's like bamboo. And then in here, it's just like a Swift. But it's, I think it's just like cotton flannel. Does it say? 
I don't know, but it can be washed. So then you just wash it. And it's great because it just captures all of the dust. Uh, so this works really, really well. I have another duster that I have, but it really just you know, the light <laughs> goes up. Um, it just kind of pushes dust around. Um, so in my place right now where I'm situated, I get a lot of dust. It gets really dusty throughout the week. Um, and I found that this didn't work as well. I think it's one that I'll have forever. It's such high quality and you just hand wash this gorgeous uh, bristle. I got this, I think it was made in Germany and I got it on Wild Minimalist, which is a wonderful site. I think they're out of California as well, um, Zero Waste Shop. And then, so today, all of that to say is that today I got another um, duster thingamajigger <laughs> uh, so that I could uh, alternate. So when that one is dirty and it needs to be washed, I'll still have one available to use. And I got turquoise because I have turquoise theme, kind of green theme uh, throughout my house still. And then I got, I needed some more um, hand sanitizer. And then I saw this and I think they also do refills or I can figure out how to get it refilled. Um, but this is, I loved, can you see what scent it is? Earl Grey. Oh my gosh. I am so excited for this. Oh, it smells so good. I love Earl Grey. That is like pretty much the exclusive tea that I drink. So that and breakfast um, tea. So I'm really excited to use this once I'm done with my other one. And then the other thing I got, what was the other thing I got? Oh, I don't think I brought it in with me. Hold on. I forgot two things. So I also got these because I'm almost, I'm almost done with my cotton swabs and these caught my eye. Um, because they're, of course, 100% compostable, compostable, uh, and they're made from cotton and bamboo, so they're swabs. There's this reusable swab that I've kind of been interested in, but I've heard mixed reviews about it, and I love having clean ears, <laughs> so I've been hesitant to, like, purchase one. And it's still, I think, well, I think it's plant-based, so I think it's still compostable, similar to my phone cases that I have by Pila, Pela, Pila, Pela. Um, these are compostable as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna try out these guys. And then last but not least, I got some deodorant to try. I don't always have, I've tried maybe two or three other eco-friendly deodorants before and they do not keep me from being stinky <laughs> or dry um pretty dry but i'm on the i'm still trying to find one and this brand let me tell you i have fallen deep in love with this brand this is uh verdant wild she is based out of santa cruz so she is uh local and all of her stuff is cruelty free and is like all organic made directly from ingredients. No, like, I mean, there's magnesium hydroxide in this, but for the most, that's it. There's arrowroot powder, coconut oil, shea, beeswax, essential oils of lavender, uh, uh, bergamot, and tea tree. And I think those were the... Are those the essential oils? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah, so I'm really hopeful because I have so many, I have so many of her other products that have been so wonderful. I have broken out because of stress, but for the most part, my skin has been the healthiest <laughs> it has ever been. I have her, I thought I'd just show you really quick here. Obviously not sponsored, although I would love to be sponsored, but uh, if you're looking for something that um, is just totally, she has an online shop and something that's just made directly from the earth's ingredients that she provides, this is amazing. So this is gentle purifying face wash. 
uh, bee clean. It has raw honey, aloe, and chamomile. It's been well loved and used. And at my shop, they have, at Feel Good, they have um, this in bulk. So I can go and just refill it and keep using the little uh, jar thingy majigger. And then uh, this is what I use to remove my makeup, which I didn't always used to do. And yeah, it, it's kind of bad. <laughs> but now I re remove my makeup. Uh, this is, uh, I say this, Jojoba, Yojoba? Somebody tell me how I'm supposed to pronounce that. Uh, ginger and sweet orange. It smells so good. This is also also has other stuff like sunflower oil. I'm not gonna read all the ingredients off to you, um, but this is also in bulk in bulk at Feel Good as well. Um, something I wish they have it in bulk soon because I'm running out actually. And this is a face toner. So I spray this on my face. This is a uh, rose, aloe vera, and witch hazel. And it is so refreshing. So, so lovely. And then I started out with this uh, facial oil, repairing facial oil. Um, I think they had this in bulk too, which is why I got it. Or I got this at the shop a while ago. Um, and I, it like didn't make me break out. It just was, it was like too heavy for my skin and it's rose hip carrot seed and sea buckthorn as well as other ingredients. And when you put it on, you smell like carrots. <laughs> so it's not my favorite. I'm glad that I have it. Um, but yeah, not my favorite. For my skin type for some folks it might be perfect for it and on her website she kind of describes about uh what type of skin it's good for but this stuff omg so good i bought this on her website and i have some other stuff but i won't go through i have like maybe two other things of hers but this works really well this is a uh, green goddess green goodness sorry um, clarifying facial oil and it's hemp seed tamanu and green tea and the green tea is wonderful it helps because I get quite inflamed I have a lot of autoimmune stuff so I get inflamed really easily and so this really helps um, get that down um, so I really love this and I was excited to see at the shop today too that they actually have some of the masks and kind of facial scrubs in bulk as well and I had just purchased one of those online so I'm excited that I'll be able to refill that. On that chatty chatty note, I am gonna leave it here for this week. Thank you all again also for your lovely comments and feedback about my calm vlog last week. It was a silent, quiet vlog set to music. Uh, it was just so much fun to put together and just was easier to do given the week before. And let me know if you'd like me to do those uh, more often um, interspersed with studio vlogs as well. Um, I just have myself been watching several vlogs that are like that and I find them very calming. Obviously calm vlogs is, is the goal. Uh, but just really centering and grounding as well not only to watch them but also to create them too so yeah you know but thank you for your feedback i hope that you all have a wonderful week ahead and i will see you next week <laughs>